We're talking now about the piano and its role in 20th century and contemporary music, looking at a number of pieces that were done this last year at Curtis, uh, starting at the beginning. Schoenberg, Webern, a piece by Messiaen that would be very influential to the Darmstadt School, mm -hmm. the modernist composer, some of his students. Boulez, John Cage, uh, pieces by Unsuk Chin, our resident composer, and a piece by Judd Greenstein, a uh, composer around my age who's responding mm -hmm. to uh, the Darmstadt School mm -hmm. music. So a lot of these composers, you can almost trace the, the history of the 20th century through piano music. Why is the piano so, mm -hmm. such a compelling medium for these composers, especially these Darmstadt School, high modernist, uh, uh, very cerebrally uh, inclined composers? Why do you yeah. think that is? Um, there's the obvious reason that a lot of composers learn music on the piano. That's For a lot of us, that's our first instrument. For me, that's the case, and probably for some of the composers you mentioned as well. But I think there's, um, there's, there's obviously a huge solo piano repertoire throughout all of music history. And there's something about the piano that really stands on its own as a solo instrument. Um, obviously, there's the harmonic element where you can play chords, you can play many things at once. Um, it allows for a high level of virtuosity. Um, and I don't know, what else? What are your ideas about this? I think, I mean, I think that's all absolutely the, the case. Um, you have one player, mm -hmm. but who has kind of an orchestra at their disposal. Yeah. So a, a violinist is, tra tra a violin is traditionally a melodic instrument. The piano is a melodic and harmonic right. instrument. So you're getting the, the vertical and the horizontal at once. Yeah, all with one player. You don't all need to bring player. four. You don't need to bring a string quartet on stage or an orchestra. Um, and so there's sort of an ease of performance with only one person. Well, that, that you have really total control yeah. over the, the sound world, the harmonic envelope, whatever words you want to use. Basically, the, the canvas that you're painting on, there's just one painter, right? Right. Um, the, or, or one actor in the play, so the, there's, n there's not a lot of coordination that has to happen between multiple musicians. Right. And if you're writing super, very highly complex, specific music, it makes a lot of sense to just be for one person who has this incredible range um, dynamically, mm -hmm. how loud or soft it is, um, low or high mm -hmm. the music is, um, the harmony, the melody. Right. There's this, it, it is, it's like a, personal orchestra. Right, and as we said before, control was a big element in a lot of this Darmstadt era music, and so it makes sense that, you know, a highly controlled sort of um, performance situation would lend itself to highly controlled music. So, you know, the, the first, in that kind of survey that I mentioned, the first piece, Schoenberg, Six Little Pieces, these are six little, almost like um, character pieces. They're miniatures, very short, and Schoenberg's challenge when he first started writing very abstract music was how to develop it, how to make longer pieces. Mm -hmm. So each one has a very specific character and identity. Mm -hmm. We start seeing this application of process in Webern, this Opus 27 variations, where he creates this, this beautiful palindrome in the music. Mm -hmm. So you could play it almost forward and backwards. That directly connects to Bach, actually, yeah. and a lot of the processes that Bach used. So the, in, imposing this highly mathematical mind, but in the most artistic, right. musical way. Uh, and then this piece by Messiaen, uh, Mode de Voleur et de Tensité, mm -hmm. excuse my French, <laughs> please. Um, and that's the first totally serialized piece. Right. So what, what, is, what is that? Right, like, so not only serialized in pitch content in the way that some of Schoenberg's pieces were where there's a tone row, but serialized in the area of um, rhythmic duration of notes and um, dynamics and all of these elements, um, they're all completely controlled before the start of the piece, essentially. So it's very pre-compositional, and that was very influential for someone like Boulez. Right, so, so before, when you talk about serial music mm -hmm. or dodecaphonic music right. or twelve-tone music, all this starting with Schoenberg and his disciples, basically, mm -hmm. composer takes a row of twelve notes, twelve different notes, mm -hmm. typically, and creates an order out of them. And that's like 
that's the, the big motive that informs the whole piece. Right. So every part of the piece comes out of that row mm -hmm. of notes, distinct from the idea of, of creating light motifs or right. melodies or themes, themes. It's like yeah. a big, one big theme mm -hmm. that the whole piece draws from. And the effect of that is to destroy any feeling of being in a key or having a home base. Right. Very jarring for a lot of people mm -hmm. to listen to at first. Mm -hmm. Total serialization, you do that with everything. With every element of the music. So you, you order not just the pitches, but the dynamics, the rhythms. The right? articulations. Articulations. Yeah. So in that way, it is like a computer program mm -hmm. where you set up all the parameters, and you press return, and the, and the piece is made. Right. You know, I don't mean to be glib about it, but that it's actually really important because it's a, it's a very different way of creating art than had been before. Right. So then um, Messiaen's student Boulez mm -hmm. takes that, right. and that idea becomes hugely influential over a whole period of music that he writes. Right. We were talking, I want to talk about this idea. Um, we did these pieces, these short pieces by Boulez Notation, uh -huh. and we juxtaposed that with Cage's music of changes, right. which is like the opposite, right? Right but so, sounds very similar. Yeah, what is that relationship? Well, so the Cages, just to summarize, his process of creating that was to, um, was to create a totally indeterminate method of determining the events of the piece. So he was actually drawing from the I Ching, which is the Chinese book of the oracle book. It's, it's a book where there are the outcomes phrasing. and you kind of like roll dice or throw right. the bones. And, and that shows you what, you know, in, in other words, there's a, it, there's a random element imposed. Right. Like you don't know what's going to happen right. when you roll the dice. So again, relinquishing control. So Cage would spend hours and hours flipping coins to determine the outcomes of, of his notes and rhythms and how they would get put down on paper, whereas Boulez was very deliberately making those decisions, but still it was a pre-compositional process. And so it's coming from completely different angles and arriving at a, at a similar sort of sound world. Right, almost as if you had a play and, and one script, every inflection of every word was specified, every movement was specified, and the other script was like, hey, make it happen. Yeah. But what's interesting is that in the, in, in the act of total control or the act of total relinquishing mm -hmm. of that control, we actually get music that sounds very similar. Yeah. Does it sound that way to you? It does sound very similar to me. I'm not sure I would be able to know if you just played one of those pieces, which one, if I didn't know. It's a fascinating yeah. effect and a, a, yeah. a kind of incredible moment in art. Right. And then so after that, we had listed, was there anyone Unsuk in between? Chin. Or we went right to Unsuk Chin, which mm -hmm. is actually quite a bit later. Mm -hmm. um, Her etudes. Yeah. Uh, which again are highly virtuosic and, mm -hmm. and explore all of these musical elements. And then finally, Judd Greenstein, his piece is called Boulez is Alive, written while Boulez was still alive in response to an article Boulez wrote called Schoenberg is Dead. Uh -huh. And um, so there's humor in it, but mm -hmm. basically he's taking these wild Boulezian gestures, but making them very diatonic, meaning mm -hmm. belonging into a key um, in a kind of more harmonic sense. Yeah. And so he's commenting then on the complexities of that. It's kind of an ultimate postmodern statement. Right. Well, it's uh, interesting. We could probably trace the history of music through keyboard music from the beginning, but something about the piano and the 20th century just meets and becomes incredibly important to composers. As right, I mean. and, and we have this very rich sort of um, history to look back on over the past 100 years, 120 years. 